No. It all ends. You descend into the ancient winding streets of Ukaizo. Battered by storms for thousands of years, the ruins bear the marks of their role as the lone witnesses of the god's great secret at the center of the city. The houses and boulevards are pierced by great spears of luminous Audra. There are no ashen bodies. No, as you approach the center of the city, the weathered architecture gives way to more luminous Audra piercing the ruins eventually overtaking them entirely. Cresting the top of a fallen tower, you finally get a clear view of Aethys. He stands, legs astride, next to a great stone monument ringed with 11 cavernous alcoves. All but three hold a gargantuan skeleton, bones scrubbed clean, but an immense and within machine floats above the monument suspended by invisible energy emanating from a well of light beneath it. Great brass rings spin around a core of metal and Audra at the machine's center. Periodically, Aethys's massive arms swing back. The movement alone is enough to draw great gusts of wind toward him. When they come, the only safe route to the god is a steep ascent along a monstrous pillar of luminous Audra intertwined with fragments of Ukaizo's ruins that it has carried through the centuries. The pillar bends in a long arc, towering above the machine. The pillar levels out near Aethys's head, a silent observer to the destruction of the machine it has grown beside over thousands of years. You weave your way along a treacherous rain-slicked path up the pillar's skyward side, as you arrive at the top, you catch Aethys' attention. Fist pulled back. Strange to see Ukaizo in this way. Six to gain experience. <laughs> it may be hard to picture, but this city was once full of life. The Hawana, yes. Great hanging trees shadowed these boulevards. Gardens sprawled across the each spring. A festival procession would wind its way from the hillside. The celebrants would pass through a steep walk among the stalls of foreign merchants. Flowers falling upon them from all people of all nations, together in a celebration of new life. Been a while, old. Why, Dwin? I did not think to see you here. But few things go as expected when the Watcher is involved. We were a good team. Once. But this isn't what we fought for. Ain't you just burning the harvest because you planted the wrong seeds? An astute observation, old friend. Consider instead that I am giving the soil back to those who till it. Spring must always follow winter. As long as there are people committed to finding the other side of change. But thank you for challenging me as you did in fairer times. I haven't... You're welcome, I suppose. Can all of that beauty and life return to this place, mighty one? Has the future of... Lost Ukaizo remains only in name, Takehu. It is a name as barren as this city. If future generations wish to create life in this place, they must look forward as much as they... This isn't right. You can't put this burden on us. You can't make the gods' problems our problem. How can you have faith that what you're doing is good? You know how many people are going to suffer because of it. No matter how you spin this, you can't... Adair, I wish I could explain it to you. It breaks my heart that I can... The souls of this world will need people like you. Lights burning brightly in the darkness. Gone, please. I'm begging you. What do I do following this? How... How am I... The dead fire and the eastern reach are full of animancers. Women and men with brilliant minds who can solve this great problem.
They will also need people with brilliant souls, like you, Shodi. People who can remember the flame you bear is not only light, but warmth. Provi what right do you have to do this? Destroy the wheel and leave us with nothing? Without even... Aloth, we are all gods and mortals, responsible for... But inaction carries its own moral responsibility. It is a burden I have carried for far too long. One must always do as their conscience dictates, even if that means abdicating a position of power. But what of you, Watcher? Why have you followed me? Have you come to bear witness to the breaking of the wheel? Oh, you destroyed all! I've come to fight you. <laughs> I mean, I know that it, that doesn't work. Mortals are already inspired. It is what has put animancy is poised to go far beyond what we and Gwithens. Why do you? Why does Helia think I should lend more power to mortals? As do I. From where should mortals draw their inspiration? Very well, Watcher. I will ensure that mortals are inspired by my passing. That my power not be expended in vain. Indulge me in a moment's curiosity. There is something I wish to know about Aeora, about Kith, that I can only learn through your eyes. You followed me all this way, dodging an armada, voyaging across, unfesting a guardian who existed to bar your trespass with the machinations of gods echoing in, and you did so on your own. That is no small achievement. Kith, across Aora, will hear the tale of it and look to you with awe. I believe that mortals possess the strength to collaborate and shape a future of their own design. Not all of my brothers and sisters. I had hoped your actions would set an example for the future. Demons coming to Okaizo unencumbered by alliances proves a different point than the one I intended. But it is a valuable one. What inspired your decision, Watcher? Did the choice echo your foundational beliefs? Or were you influenced by observation? I thank you for your perspective. Yours is not the only opinion that concerns me. All I ever wanted for mortals was growth, transformation. Some have forgotten themselves, giving in to fatalism or tyranny. Others, it brings me great sorrow that crisis is the only way to set the future in motion. Would that I could pass the responsibility of heralding your darkest hour. You shirked the aid of others and came this far alone. But I think you'll find that the future is built on trust, cooperation, and understanding among kith. Ask. You are entitled to any answer that is mine to give. The great work of the Inguithans falls to ruin. Re souls which currently await new life in the beyond will be born into the world as normal. 
but their numbers will not replenish. Anything that dies will tarry in the void of the in-between, awaiting the motion of... Once the beyond has emptied, every birth will be hollow-born. Other maladies of the soul may follow and plague those who linger in life. Unless mortals work together to carve a new path, the essence of life will be trapped in the netherworld. Gods will starve. Aora will grow silent and cold. A generation or more. That much essence is already poised to flow into Aora. But unlike an hourglass, no amount of turning should you choose. You could lay down your burden and trust in your children's children to set matters right. By your reckoning, there are still good years to come. By ours, time is short. When we tamed the cycle of reincarnation, we broke what had once functioned naturally and without intervention. The essence will simply pool in the void of the in-between, never passing through Adra networks to the beyond. The dead will be left to wander in darkness, confusion, and sorrow. Wurdika is entitled to her opinion. If the intent of this test is to justify an uprising to come, the other gods must decide for themselves if mortals are ready to dictate their future. Should Wurdika's tyranny prove the only alternative, mortals must... Pr Your perspective bridges eternity, Watcher. Many will look to you to mediate differences that could shake the very foundations of Aora. No one is worthy of unconditional trust. If you feel the gods are beyond forgiveness, then they don't deserve your obedience. Should you choose to accept the gods, I hope that you temper your faith with skepticism. For several reasons. My strength was diminished after the God Hammer Bomb, and assuming this form took it with so many vying for control of the Deadfire, I also saw a ripe opportunity for mortals to cast aside their difference. They have never been more powerful, more capable. Because of this, the gods must justify- I apologize, Watcher. There is nothing I can do to restore the glory of your hard-won and poorly situated estate. What happened to Cad Nua was not personal in nature. I would have occupied the- Given your perseverance, I know that a second home cannot be distant in your future. You have only to- Yes. They must work toward a solution. If that task is beyond their skill, then they no longer... That could mean swallowing their pride and hearkening to the wisdom of mortals. Some, I, I must attend to my final work now. You have carried a heavy burden across the dead fire, Watcher. You are free now. As free as any of us can. Many will come to you for help in the years ahead. Animants, I have great hope for you, but always remember that your future is for you.